Huh. Hot pink. Wow, that is hot. Good morning. It is a brisk Tuesday morning in Kansas. Uh, it might not be Tuesday, but I'm guessing whatever day it is that you're watching this, it probably ends in Y. Today in the shop, we have this beautiful cranberry artisan mixer. Now, I know I said hot pink at the beginning. It is actually cranberry. Uh, this machine was actually brought in by one of my very first customers that I ever had, and she had contacted me about cleaning it for her because her two twin daughters, uh, young daughters, I think about four years of age, were just diagnosed with celiac disease, which is a uh, aversion to the protein in gluten. And so any kind of flour or anything like that that isn't gluten-free will cause them to have severe gastrointestinal or disorders and issues and things like that. So she, you know, called and asked, how much would it cost to do this? Obviously, we are doing this free of charge. Um, you know, if, if it's for the sake and health of her young girls, obviously, we're not going to charge her a dang thing. We like to support our customers, uh, you know, to the best of our ability. We, you know, we can't do this for every single person. Otherwise, I'd be homeless. But I do like to help out every chance I get. Today, we're going to be discussing the disassembly of the mixer. Now, this is going to be for the tilt head machines, you know, your classic, classic plus, ultra, artisan, any KitchenAid that tilts, it'll be the same exact thing. So, basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to take the machine in half, do things like re-grease, which is a necessity to keep your machine running indefinitely, uh, as well as changing out gears um, and just fixing faulty parts that are on the in internals of the machine. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's get right to it. To disassemble your mixer, you're going to need a few tools. You're going to need some punches, a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, a rubber mallet, and potentially a claw hammer. If you need any of these tools, you need parts, grease, gaskets, whatever you need to take care of your mixer, we have available on our website, mrmixer.store. I'll put the link in the description. All right, let's get right to it. What you're gonna need to start is your Phillips head screwdriver. The very first step is to remove this back cap. So just take your screwdriver and we'll just go ahead and loosen that screw there. All right. Now I usually take this screw and I just throw it down here into where the bolt sits. With the screw removed, now we can take out the back cap. All you do is pull towards you a little bit and then lift up and away. With the back cap removed, you can see that it has these little tabs on it right here. They actually seat back in right here on the machine in these little cutouts right here. Intermission. I'm a stay-at-home dad, so I'm going to have to go in and take care of the boy real quick. I'll be right back. I have to change his grease real quick. Ooh, he pooped on my hand. Just kidding, that's some old grease. Let's get back to work. With the back cap removed, now we can go ahead and remove the screws on the beauty band located here and here. We'll be using the Phillips head screwdriver again. Take note of the two different screws used. This one is for the back cap and the smaller ones are for the beauty band. With the screws removed from the beauty band, just go ahead and pull it away. It lifts right out. With the band removed, you'll likely notice some oil around the band. You can kind of see it here and here. It just, through vibration, it leaks out and it just rides this band all the way to the back of the machine. Now you can tell, if you have an older machine, this grease will be very dark colored as that was the grease. KitchenAid actually tried to pull a fast one and they put white grease inside their machines, which is the same grease that we use, but they did it in an attempt to cover up the oil leaking as you really just can't tell what this is. Unless you know that is. With the band removed, use this as an opportunity to wipe down your machine to get all of the excess oil that's leaked out. It'll uh, just kind of help keep things clean, prevent it from getting all over your hands and all over your workstation. This is a relatively new machine, only being about a year old, so there's not much oil that's leaked out of the machine, but you can tell we did pick some up here on the paper towel. Now it's time to remove the cord and the strain relief from the machine. It simply just pulls out. Apply a little pressure and it'll pop right out. This piece that slides into the machine right here is called the strain relief on the cord. What it does is it, it seats in here and it holds it tight and prevents you from pulling on these wires and you know doing things like breaking the wires and disconnecting the clips from the machine. 
All right, now that we have the power cord out, it's a time to move back to the front of the machine. What I recommend is taking a towel, an old shop rag or something, and placing it over the base of your machine to prevent it from receiving damage when these parts come loose. What we're going to need for this part of the fix is a flathead screwdriver and a rubber mallet. With your flathead screwdriver, simply place it right on the edge of this drip ring here and just give it a few taps with your mallet. You can see it start to break loose. And it's off. Sometimes with this ring, if, you're, if your machine's leaking oil really bad, you'll see oil that's all in here. You can go ahead and clean that out. You might find flour or other baking debris in here as well. Sometimes if you look closely, you can see grease that's actually got thrown off of the gears. That's what the drip ring is designed for, is to catch the oil and grease that leaks out of this spot on the machine. With the drip ring removed, now we are ready for possibly the most intimidating part of taking this machine apart. What you're going to need is a 1 8 inch punch. Take your punch, line it up with the pin, and give it some taps with a rubber mallet. Sometimes this pin can be rather tight and you might have to use an actual claw hammer to get it to remove. If you try tapping it from one side and you can't get it to move, come turn the, you can basically just turn the planetary just like this to the other side of the pin and give it some few taps on the other side. Some of these pins come out really easy. Some of them take quite a lot of force. So if you feel like you have to hit it pretty hard, don't be overly scared. And you'll feel it start to break loose. And it'll pop right out the other side. We'll just go ahead and remove it. This is what the pin looks like. Now sometimes these pens can be rather stubborn. Now not all of them, some of you may have this issue, some of yours are gonna come right out. But if your pen is being stubborn, you can turn your machine on its side on your lap like so. Make sure that the pen is lined up on your lap and what, what you're gonna do is your lap is actually going to uh, provide some pressure against it so that when you hit it, your machine isn't getting knocked around. It's actually providing a nice stopping force. It's going to allow you to add more controlled force to each hit. With the pin removed, now it's time to remove the planetary. Sometimes you can just pull it out down by hand like so. However, on occasion, you will be required to use a flathead screwdriver, even two. And what we do is we put it right in the bolt hole right there, that little cutout. And you can go from both sides, get one on each side, you know, here and over here, and just add a little bit of downwards pressure. Now be careful, that's why we put the towel down there, because this will pop off when you're applying pressure. You don't want it to fall and damage your machine. This is what the planetary looks like once it's removed. Take note, sometimes there will be a cardboard washer stuck to this part. You don't want to lose that. On this particular machine, it stayed stuck on the planetary shaft. We can just remove that and set it off to the side. I like to set it back with my planetary just to make sure it doesn't get lost. Here's a good example of why we do need to be replacing the grease in these machines. Now, if you look at all the grease you see plastered up here, all of that was on these gears at one point in time, but as they run, it gets flicked off of the gears. Now, look how exposed those teeth are. Now, they do still have a light layer on them, but as, as the machine ages, that will dry out and then it'll leave just metal on metal. Now here's the gear that actually runs in that track as well. You can also tell that all of the grease on there has just been ran off of it and it's now exposed. Before starting the disassembly, make sure to tilt up the head and look at the screws that hold the housing in place. If yours are square like this, then you're gonna need an S1 bit. Most of these are flathead on the older machines. They switched to the Robertson S1 bit in 2016. The Robertson square head bit looks like this. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, we do have them in our store along with the driver to go with it. All right, now it's time to start removing the lower housing screws. 
Now, like I said, this one requires the S1 bit. A lot of you with older machines will just have a flathead screwdriver. So let's get to it. All we're gonna do is just loosen all these screws here, take them out. All right, now that we have all five screws removed from around the planetary, there are five, one, two, three, four, five. It is time to move on to the screws that hold the actual body in place. So what we're gonna do is remove those. There's one here, one here, and then on the rear side of the machine, which we'll get to here in a second, there'll be two more. Let's take those out. Now take note of the two different screw sizes that go in. Now the, the full body threaded screw is one that goes into the lower housing here, and the one with this straight shank are the ones that go into the planetary. Now that you have the screws removed from the planetary, we're gonna move to the back of the machine and take out these two screws. There's one on each side, here and over here. Sometimes it may be easier to tilt the head up and turn the head towards you and come in at an angle like this to get access to that screw. Now be careful when you're removing these as you don't want to damage your paint. Make sure to take note, it doesn't matter which side this goes in, but it needs to go on the back of the machine. You see there's a little washer in there, it helps to hold it in place, it is a lock washer. If you find at any point that you're missing any of these screws, go ahead and contact us. We do have these available. Now with your power cord removed from the strain relief port and all of the screws removed from the housing, you should have removed nine in total. It is now time to take the top off of the mixer. Now how I recommend doing this is you wanna take a towel because you don't wanna damage the paint on the inside of your machine. I take a towel, put it over a flathead screwdriver like so, and we'll just insert it in this little port here and give it a little pry. You'll see it start to break loose. Once you have it broke loose from the machine, it should be able to pull right off. Make sure to set the head of your machine on a towel or an other non-abrasive surface as to not scratch the paint. Now let's take a look at what we got inside here. As I stated previously, in 2016, they switched to a white grease to kind of cover up the fact that they leak. Uh, you can't really see it as well as we've showed in the beginning of this video. So what, this is what we have here. We have the, uh, the hub gear here. This is the drive gear that connects to the motor. And then here we have the transmission. You have the center gear as well as the worm gear. Some of yours may look a lot dirtier than this. It'll be black, it'll be hard. This stuff is still pretty fresh. Some of yours may be more like uh, rubber on the outside. It'll be packed up real heavy back here in the back of the gearbox. If you're wondering why I've been dressed like Mario this whole time, it's because I was supposed to have an interview with the Nightly News. Unfortunately, one of their other interviews ended up taking too long, and so they didn't have a chance to get out. So, unfortunately, I won't be wearing this for the interview, but you guys got to see it. As always, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to give us a like and a follow as it'll greatly help our channel grow. Also, if you need any parts or grease, make sure to check out the Mr. Mixer store at mrmixer.store. We'll also link it in the description below. For part two to see the best way to regrease your machine, make sure to follow this video right up here. Mr. Mixer, signing off. <laughs> Are we going to leave that in there just to see? <laughs>